Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So let's just get right into it. I have all these things I need to age and get ready to install into the rooming house laundry room. Now, this is the Victorian hot water tank that I made, and I made it out of the medicine bottles and some other old containers. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out in my playlist. Now, the wash that I'm putting on the outside of the hot water tank is made from just regular acrylic paint and alcohol. And I'm using uh, isopropyl or regular rubbing alcohol. I'm using it because it evaporates quickly, faster than water. It definitely would work with water, but I like that the alcohol dries faster and leaves a kind of a streaky effect. Now, I put it on the top first. And then I went on to begin to add the wash to the doors. Now, if those of you all who saw the first video, you saw I only had four rivets on the doors. I have added additional rivets just to give it more detail and give the dirty wash more places to stick. And I really like the way that turned out. And just comparing the clean one to the dirty one, the wash makes a big difference. And I love the way it clings. It makes it look kind of sooty and greasy. Now, again, dolls, this is another case of edited video. It took me quite a while to go over this enough times to get the effect that I wanted. So take your time. This is not something you're going to rush through because you really want it to have the look of layered dirt you can actually use more than one color now i just used the black but you could use black you could use brown you could even use gray in multiple layers but you're only limited by your imagination i'll just say dolls this is definitely an opportunity to play and see what looks good to you and see what you like now i'm heading to the bottom or the base now this is the same color as the top but i definitely want it to look like it's a little greasy, sooted up, and a little old. So everything will have a look that it's been in there a long time so that it'll look natural with the rest of the elements in the laundry room. Now here I'm moving on to the silver pipe, which is made out of the same material the water pipes over my sink is made of. And I'm just adding a dab of the wash to that silver chain so it won't look so bright. I'm so excited. I'm really loving the way this wash is really adding age and time to this piece. Now I am going back and adding a little extra around areas that would have been touched and handled a lot, like right around the door handles. And that looks really good. So now let's work on this little sink. Now here's my little sink. And if you haven't seen the video of me making the foundation or the legs for this sink, definitely check it out in the laundry room playlist. Now I started out and I just sprayed this item all together with the alcohol before I started to add the wash because I wanted it to look a little streaky and drippy. And so now I'm just rubbing in some of the wash that I've laid on there, hoping that it absorb a little bit into the surface of the little tub just to make it look a little little more murky, not glunky, just murky. And I'm just rubbing in a little bit of that wash and it look, it's looking good. I just don't want to wipe off too much. So now I'm beginning to smear the wash around in the bottom of the tub and around the sides. Now I'm not going to leave a lot. I'm going to wipe some of it out, but I do want it to have a little staining to the inside of the tub. Now, before that dries, I do want to dab some of that out because I don't want it to leave a ring um, at the bottom of the tub. I want it to be stained, but I don't want it to be a solid ring. So I'm just dabbing it out around the outside and dabbing it a little bit on the inside to keep it from uh, building up too heavy because I don't want it to look too dark. Now for the little rust drip. Now I'm just getting some of that uh, burnt umber colored acrylic paint and it's mixed with a little bit of the black and a little bit of the alcohol as well. I've created a small wash. You can't see it from here, dolls, but it's a burnt umber, the alcohol, and the black. And I'm going to drip it around at the bottom 
of the tub to give that kind of rusted effect. And I'm letting it drip on the side. After I get it, I let it drip up the side of the drain area. You'll be able to see it in a minute, dolls. But just allowing it to pool around the edge of the drain. Because if you have rusty pipes, some of the water is going to have rust in it too. And it's going to leave a stain. I'm going to create a little bit more rusty water and just let it drip into the tub and just leave a streak. Get it on the end of my brush and just let it drip. So while that's drying, let's go ahead and make a stopper for the drain. This was a suggestion by my friend over at Tiny Keyhole Minis. So I'm using a piece of that leftover chain to add a stopper. So I'm putting a little metal bead here to hold the stopper and I used a little drop of super glue to put the bead in place and now I'm hanging the chain down into the hole where the gel glue is. And after I dropped the chain down into the bead, it seemed like it was setting. I added a small metal bead that looks like a bell to the end of the silver chain and it looks like a stopper to me. I may need to paint the little bell shaped stopper, but I'm going to let it dry. I can't wait to start adding accessories and details to this room, but let's move on. So now looking at everything, I really like the way the tub looks, but these legs are supposed to be metal. So I just want to give a little hint of rust to these wrought iron legs. Now they're already painted black, so I'm just adding a little bit of black and brown alcohol wash to them to just give them sort of like a hint or cast the shadow of rust on to simulate wrought iron. So this is really looking good to me, dolls. I really like the stain, the rusty look, the little metal looking cast on the legs with the little brown and black wash. This is really coming along nice. I'm very pleased with the look of the tub. And let's take a quick glance at this hot water tank, all uh, cast iron and old and greasy looking. Yeah, that looks really good. Like it's been sitting in that little laundry room for decades, building up rust, dirt, and grime. Aging miniatures really brings them to life. So now, dolls, let's get to these pipes. Using the same type of wash, the black acrylic paint, and the alcohol. Now, it actually looks like I mixed this up a little thick. I'm definitely going to need to thin that out because I needed to drip and run and not stick. So you see here, dolls, I made my formula a little bit too thick because it's coming off of the brush way too heavy. So I added a little bit, a few more sprays of the alcohol to thin it out so that the alcohol will actually run and drip down the pipes because I want it to look kind of streaky. I don't want it to be a heavy black coat because it'll cover up too much of the metal and that's not the look that I'm going for. And here I definitely put on too much. So I'm just dragging a baby wipe across it to just pull off some of the extra. Now you can actually avoid this step if you actually create your uh, alcohol and acrylic paint wash. Keep it in a container already pre-mixed so you don't have to mix it up each time. But after I dabbed it with the baby wipe, the effect turned out really good because it looks smeared like the uh, dirt is kind of dragged on it. Now you can kind of see now because the consistency is thinner, it's a little drippy and it's running. And that's the way I really like it to go on. Just really, really runny and a little drippy. So it'll be streaky. Again, not pasty and coated. I just want it to drip and run because it gives a really nice effect, especially after it dries. And I did the exact same process to the entire piece so that it'll be pretty evenly coated. And you don't want it to be perfect dolls. You can allow it to be thicker in some areas, more so than others, like areas down near the lower part or the part toward the floor could be a little darker and heavier. But do it based on your discretion. If you need to look at something for inspiration, definitely do that. But I'm doing it straight from my imagination. Now here, dolls, I'm just kind of giving you a close-up of how it looks to kind of see how it looked after it dried. Yeah, it looks a little streaky, a little greasy, 
you know, just everything looks like nicely coated. So I just wanted you to see what this portion looked like before I move on to the next part, which is the rust. And yes, I said rust dolls. Now there are so many ways that you can create this effect, but I'm using a couple different things to create the look that I want. Now dolls, I use Mod Podge, Cinnamon, and Turmeric to create my rust. And I'm also going to be using a little bit of that burnt umber paint as well. So I started with some dabs of Mod Podge in the areas where I want the rust to be concentrated. And the lighter color is the turmeric and the darker color is the cinnamon. My friend over at Gleek's Kitchen would probably cringe to see me using good spices to make miniatures. But I'm only using a little bit, so I think she'll forgive me. Mm -hmm. Now you can see, dolls, the areas where the rust is really clinging. And those are the areas where I actually placed the Mod Podge. And I am dusting a little bit of it off of my knobs because it coated up quite a bit because some of it was sticking to the acrylic paint and alcohol wash. But I really, really like the way this is turning out. And I'm allowing the spicy rust to dry. And then I'm going to do some little touch-ups with a little bit of my burnt umber paint for variation. And you know, dolls, I like the layering process because things like rust are progressive. At different stages, you get different variations in color and thickness. So I just wanted you dolls to see what it looked like up close after I was done with this portion before I move on to the touch-ups with my paint. And I've made a complete mess of my work table. So I'm just going to add a couple little sprinkles to the area where I see little bits of the Mod Podge showing. And so that's looking really good to me. So let's get that paintbrush out. So now I have the burnt umber and I'm just kind of stippling it in. I'm not brushing it on. I'm not doing it too heavy, but just tapping it in areas just randomly to give it a more intense shade of the orange in certain parts. And it is a little damp, but it will dry and it will cling to those parts where the Mod Podge and the Spicy Rust have already settled in. And here is my finished piece, dolls. I'm really pleased with it. I'm very excited about how it's going to look in my cramped little gloomy laundry room. Now, dolls, if you enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe, and always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. So, dolls, the next video will be the installation of the beadboard and adding in all these details. I'm really looking forward to that so we can start working on accessories. So, dolls, I'm so excited, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.